Hello everyone and welcome to the June Aunt Lewis True Life Story, the first episode. First, before I begin, let me start by making everything clear. I am not here to bash or to embarrass anyone in any form. The names and the people that I will mention in this story is truly based on my experience with them. And I would further go ahead to explain how I felt about the situation. It is strictly and personally my opinion. Even when I speak about my husband, I will be speaking about him from an aspect of what I thought happened. Unfortunately, my husband is not here and he's not alive and be able to explain his part or even to say what he had in his mindset based on what he was doing. Anyhow, today is one of those days I want to make it clear that any name mentioned here will not be a name that will be a real name, number one, even though this is based on my true life story, and I'd rather leave it that way so that no one really gets hurt. I'm going to speak again in this particular series on sexual abuse. I will be speaking on it on an aspect of a child that was abused because my sexual abuse came as a child. But I will be explaining certain things along the way as I go. And the reason for this is because I want some child, somebody to know not to be embarrassed. Most of the times people are ashamed when they're sexually abused and they're ashamed to speak about it. I want to encourage somebody that they can speak out about such a situation. And we'll go ahead further and discuss even the perpetrator and the victim as well. Me being the victim. I'm not speaking of anybody else. I will only speak about myself. Okay? But I want to set that clear today. The premise of my entire series series is to help someone. It's to help a marriage. It's to help a relationship. It's to help someone change their mindset to understand that regardless of what happens to us in life, we at the end of the day have the power to take control of what happened to us. Again, this is not to bash anyone. So I will not be dragging anybody through the mud on this series, but I will be educating you and telling you about my life and what happened to me and the process and the things that I've learned throughout my life. We're going to begin with me coming to New York. Okay, now that we've gotten that out of the way, let me begin with some basic housekeeping. So, um... If you like this program, please do like and subscribe and comment. Hit the bell at the bottom so that you can be notified and know when new programs is coming on. This will be a weekly show. It will be aired on Thursdays around 2 o'clock in the afternoon. It will be on LinkedIn. It will be on Facebook. And it will be on Instagram as well. So those as well as YouTube and my major website, which is the JuneAndLewisShow.com. So that you guys can know that. So I'm 15 years of age and um, we have the opportunity to come to New York. First, let me go back and say, my dad was actually from Barbados. My dad was not a Guyanese. He was a Barbadian. They came to Ghana and live, my parents were. But anyway, I'm 15, my mom had the opportunity and she came to the United States and when I lived in Guyana my dad was one of the people that did fairly well in Guyana he had a farm he had a business you know so he was doing well we lived in a home it was a six bedroom home I had my own bedroom we had a maid that sort of thing so we're given the opportunity now and my mom is finally able to send for us and we come to the United States uh, it was in November and it was a cold weather time I remember but I was excited uh, because of the fact I'm getting to come to America. I've seen Gone with the Wind. I've seen all those movies. And in my mind at 15, a white-eyed teenager is like, wow, okay. So I'm going to America. My mom is in America, so she must be living better than us. So we get here, and the car pulls up. My cousin picked us up, and the car pulls up. And we come up to this big building at the corner of um, Utica and Linden Boulevard. And oh my gosh, I'm so excited. It's a big building my mom is living in. We open the door and we go in. And we went up a set of stairs and here I am. Walk through the door and I look to my right and there's a small little kitchen. And then I came out and I walked around and I went in one room and came out the other one. And I realized, this is a small place. So I asked my mom, I said, hey mom. I said, where's the rest of the house? Are we gonna go? She said, no, this is it. Now, imagine being 15 years of age and you came from where you had your own room 
your own, you had a maid, somebody cooking for you, you had all of those things, and here you are thrust into a situation of a two bedroom. That wasn't funny. So anyway, that was good. I was still excited. I'm waiting to get to the snow. A couple days later, snow fell and I went outside and I enjoyed the snow for the first time. And then by the second day, I'm like, I hate this. <laughs> so that was it. But anyway, my whole point to this premise is sometimes we don't always get the things we anticipate in life, right? First. For those of you who are relying on somebody to either send for you to come to the U.S. or send for you ac across any part of the world, be appreciative of that. When you come to the U.S., if they don't have all the things that you anticipate and expect them to have, please remember that they've made a sacrifice in order to bring you to America. So a couple of weeks go by and um, my dad had bought, because he had sold the farm that he had had, by the way, for $10,000. And... Back in, that's 10,000 Guyanese dollars. 10,000 Guyanese dollars today is 50 US dollars. Man, I'm telling you, times have changed. Anyway, he bought the, this chain and um, this big chain back in the 70s, back in those days where people bought gold. Of course, you guys know who know gold is still valuable today. And I had mine and said, June Ann, big on me. So because my dad was well known in Ghana and I could have walked with a chain like that probably and nobody had taken it from me. They let me go to school with it. I'm going to school and a week after I went to, I was wearing it to school. I was going home one day from school and I noticed two young men walking in front of me and the two young men looked at me and they're looking real hard at me. And I'm offended because I'm like, why are they looking at me like that? I'm new to the country. I don't know anybody besides my brothers and a few friends at school. Anyway, I um, I didn't say anything. I, I kept going. Next day, same two guys is walking in front of me. And these two guys are looking at me real hard. But because I'm from Guyana, I'm like, okay, whatever. So <laughs> I walk up to the door and go to put the key in the door. All of a sudden, this hand came to my chest and the guy, I feel the guy hold the chain. I look through the side of my eye. I can see it's, it's the same guy. And I grab onto this piece. Now there's three men, maybe about 20 feet away from us. And these three men are going, what's happening? They're thinking I'm fighting with these guys. But I'm going to tell you something that I learned on that day, guys. That literally fear can cripple and paralyze you. My fight or flight at that moment froze for me. All I can do is hold on to the chain and the guy grabbed the, the main part of it and he ran. I didn't say anything. All I needed to do was just tell those men, I didn't say a word. I just shut up and I went upstairs. It shut down my fight or flight. Literally my body froze. I didn't say anything for about half an hour. I was so scared and trembling. I'd never been robbed before in my life. New York City. When they say that if you can make it there, you can make it anywhere. That is truly one of those cities if you can make it there. That was my introduction to New York City, to crime and that sort of thing. It had never happened to me before. So one of the things I learned from that, as well as something else that happened a few weeks later at school, I was coming home and now because of what happened with the guys, I decided I'm gonna catch the bus. I'm gonna walk, the bus was a short way. I decided I'm gonna just go catch the bus. I'm not gonna walk home. I'm standing at the bus stop. And first day that I'm standing at the bus stop, I'm waiting for, for the bus. I'm standing there and it's raining. And out of the side of my eye, I see a car pull up. Never forget, it was a green Dodge. And I saw a guy point a gun out of the, the car. And when I look, if it's the guy standing to my right, is who he was planning to shoot. Myself, it was about five of us. Everybody saw and fell to the ground in the rain. Fell to the ground. You talk about traumatic for a young person moving to a new city and anticipating so much. That was trauma for me. But you know what? It made me wiser and it made me smarter. Now I'm alert. Now I can go anywhere in the world based on that experience when I walked into New York that it opened my eyes to. I can go anywhere in the world and I'm always alert and conscious of what's going on around me. 
So we went, went years later, I got married, and I'll tell you the results of that education that I got. Years later, we I got married, and we were in Germany. My husband, we were stationed in Germany, and um, we were in Paris. While you're in Germany, because so close and you're in Europe you can get on buses and trains and so the military took us on the tour and we went to Paris and I never forget we were standing in the middle and people are taking pictures and you know you're by the Eiffel Tower and all this stuff and people are taking pictures and three young men were there and from the time I saw them I realized they were up to no good they were there and they were talking in the group and then you saw them just sussing out what to do well it was myself and my husband and my two children at the time we only had two and I'm going to tell you, they walked up to us and said, hey, do you mind if we take your picture? And we already knew what was up. We said, no, thank you. No. So that was it. They walked away from us and walked to the other couple. When they walked to the other couple, not even two minutes later, all we heard was, hello, they just robbed us. They snatched the camera. They asked them if they could take the picture and they ran away with it. But we knew that was going to happen. But because I lived in New York and that experience that I had, it made me aware and now I was self-aware of my environment. So for you people that are coming to the US, be aware that you, and even anywhere, that's not just the US, that's all over the world. Somebody knows that you need to be aware of your environment at all times, yes. So I'm living in New York now and life is going and I met my husband who I had known by the way, since I was a child in Guyana. I knew him since I was nine years of age. So he asked me to be his girlfriend. I'm his girlfriend and we're dating. Um, we're doing things as teenagers that um, we shouldn't be doing as teenagers. But because my mom was separated from us for such a long time, I don't think she felt that she had the right to parent in a strict form, meaning that say, okay, no, you can't do this, you can't do that. I think she felt guilty. And so thus allowing us, myself and my brothers, to be open, I guess, to date and that sort of thing, right? Anyway, I can tell you this right now. I will not do, I did not do that with my children. I determined after I got us a no, and I had children, no, I'm not going to let them date. So my children actually didn't date until they were after 18 when they were old enough. Because we did things as teenagers that teenagers do if you let, if you ha let them be teenagers and be who they are. So I'm in college and um, I, I swear that I know everything in life at this point. And I, the next thing I knew is that I was pregnant and uh, told my mom and my mom at that point made the suggestion for me not to have the child and I said no I'm going to have my child as a matter of fact my mom was trying to explain something to me I said you don't have to tell me I said you know I'm 21 years of age and I know everything I need to know in life I never forget she laughed at me when I said that and I was upset but now I'm old I realize why she laughed at me but anyway um, so I made the decision that I'm going to have my child. My husband made the decision he's going to go into the military. And um, two young people, you know, we just gown ho. We know everything is going to be perfect in life. At least I, from my point of view, thought this was it as a young woman. Oh, once I get married to my husband, life is going to be perfect. We're going to live this honeymoon life. We're going to, everything is, I'm going to have the baby, da, 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 da. Needless to say, that was not so. After my husband joined the military and we moved away and lived on our own, I realized for the first time things were not going right. Okay? Um, let me put it this way. I came back home to visit my mom. And um, while I was there, I made a phone call back to him. Well, we spoke to each other on the phone and when we hung up, he thought the phone was hung up and it wasn't. And I decided to listen. So as I'm listening, I hear a, a female talking in the background and he's having a conversation. Anyway, that was the first phase of infidelity through the marriage. But let me stop and go back. He was being a typical teenager before we had run into problems where there was cheating. And then I have to stop it right here because I have to say, both my husband and I were raised in environments where we saw cheating and promiscuousness was a part of our life. 
on my husband's side, he saw it in his family. It was a joke. Men were already expected to be able to cheat. Um, that was a thing. You didn't have one girl. You were soft if you only had one girl. You know, oh, she's controlling you or whatever they would call you. A paku is the word that they used back then. And um, for me, I saw it in my family because my I came from a family where my dad has several children with several different women. Um, he married my mom and he married two, he married three times afterwards, two times afterwards, but, um, I have several brothers and sisters and we're, we all look totally different. My dad, by the way, I would mention is not racist. So I'll leave it there. So that was it. Uh, for us, our upbringing of what we had seen in life was not always positive. And for them that, that did it, that's what they had seen before. And so the legacy continued in that particular form where cheating was a major thing. And so there it was. But I'm still this hopeful young lady that even though that is so, that my husband in my mind is going to be true. And when we're married, he's going to be committed and we're, and life is going to be la di da di da well, I found out after we were married that it was not so that that happened. You know, I asked him for an explanation when I finally got back through to him and he made up a story and it went that way. On the next, I'm going to leave it here and I'm going to end here. On the next series, I'm going to talk about why in the first phase of my life, I was only attracted to dark skinned men. I'm going to break it down what happened and how that transitioned in my life and how I was able to come out of that into being what I would say somebody that has a broader mindset now. All right, guys, talk to you later. Look forward to seeing you on the other one. I've got some good stuff to tell you on that one. Very and I want to say that this particular series, the June Aunt Lewis show, June Aunt Lewis life story, being robbed in New York for the first time, is being sponsored by Vifoli. Vifoli Serum is excellent source for sagging, jowling skin. And Vifoli Cream is a great moisturizer to keep the face moisturized and hydrated, as well as Vifoli Night Cream is great for the skin to restore moisture and hydration to the skin. The information of how you can obtain your Vifoli for, your, for you women and men that want to stay youthful is at the bottom. Click on the link and find out more about Vifoli.